Hey guys, Tim King here for rcgroups.com and today we're going to talk a little bit about the FreeSky Horus. The Horus is the brand new radio from FreeSky. Uh, amazing transmitter in my opinion with tons of features. 32 channels if you add an extra module which is pretty awesome. It's 16 as it comes out of the box. Um, the gimbals are CNC aluminum. Machine ball bearing uh, with Hall Effect sensors makes for a really smooth gimbal. Uh, the screen is a high resolution uh, TFT display that's visible in direct sunlight. It also has uh, internal antenna and a port to add an external antenna. There are two types of trainer ports, JR and Futaba, and it also supports wireless trainer, which is really handy. There's a six position encoder. There are six sliders. There are all kinds of switches. You've got a ton of three position switches. There's, there's here is a single two position. Here is a momentary, but every other switch on here is three positions. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, three position switches. You also have two rotary knobs here and here. You also have a six position encoder that you can use for flight modes. And then of course you've got your menu navigation. You've got your primary flight control trims, and then you've got two assignable trims. On the back of the radio, which we'll get to in a moment, there are two additional uh, slider inputs. Um, the first thing that I noticed about the radio is its heft. I put it on the scales. It weighs uh, about 2 pounds 14 ounces, so it's a pretty, pretty decent sized radio. It feels solid in your hands. Um, it's just, a, like I said, it's an amazing radio. Completely customizable. You can do anything you want to with it. Right here is one thing that, uh, that I really like. The power switch is completely covered, uh, so you can't accidentally bump it, but it also has a safety feature it's a long press power switch so if you do bump it it'll ask you if you want to turn the radio off so there's no way that you're accidentally going to turn it off in flight it also uh, has the mount here for this little strap so you can hook your your transmitter strap clips in here I have noticed depending on how you hold the radio that it will open this cover I know that there have been uh, some guys that didn't like that too much I don't find that it bothers me I did have the radio apart to remove the ratchet and the throttle and it looks like it's really well built in here, so I don't I don't see that being a problem as far as supporting the weight. I do wish that the uh, the attachment point was a little more centered on the switch, so it wouldn't open. But again, that's not a huge uh, drawback for me personally. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, let's look at the screen real quick. A long press will turn the radio on. It speaks to you, tells you uh, welcome to Horus. Of course, I've updated the flash image. Um, it gives me a, sw a switch warning screen to let me know what's going on because I've got some, some stuff pre-programmed for these switches here. RSSI, zero dB. And it also gives you a readout immediately of the RSSI strength. Um, I've got it set up on the repeat model right now, which I'll be doing a review of shortly. But I just wanted to show you the screen. I'm really blown away with how good the screen looks. It's, uh, it's easy to read, like I said, in the daylight. Um, the brightness you can set to be adjustable by potentiometer, which I've done here. Let's, uh, let's see if we can't move the radio down just a little bit here and get you a little closer in on that screen. There you go. And as I move this up, you can see the brightness goes way up. And then it'll, of course, come way down as well. You can also set a timer to turn that backlight off. So if you're flying at night, it doesn't... Uh, doesn't distract you. Uh, the light will go away completely and then you can set it to come back on based on whether or not you move a stick input or use some some of the uh, the button inputs which are here for page up page down and then a four-way joystick and then your regular uh, menu options here you've got a system menu return model menu telemetry and then a rotary encoder here I'm blown away with the radio I'm a free sky fan anyway I've been flying the tar the the Tyrannus for a while and uh, really was looking forward to the horse because of the uh, the top mounted screen and of course the color screen is always nice but the radio feels solid to me um, I can't ask for much more in the way of form factor it is a wider radio than what you're used to uh, but that's not a uh, not a bad thing in my opinion it actually it feels good when you're holding it to fly with um, the switches are laid out really nice for me I pinch so these switches are easy to get to by just taking my pointer finger off here and then I use my index finger to catch these switches. And I also can drop my, my uh, index finger back to get the sliders on the back of the radio. Um, you do, I find, I have to take my hands off obviously to access those two potentiometers in the flight mode switch, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially for flight mode. A lot of times you're going to be in a stable attitude when you change flight modes, especially if you're talking about a multi-rotor 
or if you're using a uh, fixed wing craft running uh, Pixhawk or APM. Uh, so that's not a big deal. Of course you can also program that switch to be anything you want and you can assign flight modes just like uh, with the Tyrannus to any of the switches or any other conditions that you might find. Go ahead and flip the radio over and let you guys get a look at the back of it. We'll turn it off. And see it just came up and asked me if I really wanted to turn the radio off. And I'm going to roll over and tell it OK and push the encoder and of course that completes the power off process. What we're going to do now is uh, let's turn the radio up and we'll turn it around here. Talk about some of the features on the back. Here are the other two potentiometers that I was talking about that I accessed with my index fingers. Up here is where we have the external antenna port that you can choose to use. Uh, it is worth noting that FreeSky does advise that if you're flying FPV with this unit that it's a good idea to use the external antenna which was included with my demo unit. Um, it, it makes sense because if you think about it your, your regular antenna is located behind this panel and of course being behind the panel you're going to experience just a little bit less signal strength because it's buried inside so that gives you the option to use an external antenna and pick up a little more. Um, with the later firmware updates it will actually use both antennas at the same time for that internal module to give you a maximum amount of, uh, of signal penetration. We'll go a little further here. Of course we have the, uh, the standard JR module bay, JR style module bay, which is really nice. And then these panels come out and there are your two trainer ports, the Futaba and a st standard JR or DSC style. And then over here on this side is where we put the micro SD card in and our USB port for uh, computer access. It's worth noting that as of the date of this review, the software for the, Tyrann for the Tyrannus OpenTX software, the companion software, uh, will not support the Horus if you choose to go the OpenTX route. They are working on that though. Um, at this point also, FreeSky does not have a computer interface for the FRTX software. Um, and I'm not sure if that's going to be available at some point or not. But it doesn't matter because programming a, a model in here is really simple with the way they've got the menus set up. Over here on this side you see these nice uh, cushioned grips. These are kind of a rubbery feeling. Make it really easy to hold onto the radio. And then we'll turn around over here. There's a headphone jack here. Then if we tilt the radio up, there's a charge jack down here at the bottom, which is nice because when you charge the radio, I found I leave it sitting like this. So instead of having the cable in an awkward position coming out of the back of the radio, it just plugs in nice and neat right there. Um, a note as to battery life. Uh, I'm getting, uh, I've gotten eight hours so far out of it before I hit the, the low voltage warning on the transmitter. And that is because I do have the display set up to time out after about 30 seconds. And I do keep my brightness low. Even when I'm flying with it outdoors, I've noticed that I can see the screen quite well. And then of course there's some other features that help me contribute to a decent battery life. My telemetry callouts I have on this spring-loaded switch. So when I'm flying and I pull this switch, I get the RSSI warning read out to me. And then after that I'll also get battery voltage on the aircraft that I'm flying, which is really handy. It makes it easy to, to instantly tell what's going on. And then of course I use the timer as well as a backup. The sticks are adjustable for length, they are adjustable for tension, you can remove the ratchet from the throttle and it's very easy to swap modes. Uh, it's a matter of tightening one screw and loosening another and you can have your throttle on this side and your elevator over here if you so wish. Menu navigation I found was really straightforward. Um, this is the first time that I've actually delved into a free sky based operating system. I got my Tyrannus and immediately flashed open TX on it. But on this one I did want to go into, into some time with the FreeSky system. And I was pretty impressed with how easy it is. Uh, to choose a model, for example, we'll do that real quick. You click the system button and it highlights model select. And we'll uh, let's zoom in here a little bit so maybe you guys can see that a little better. Alright, so we're highlighted on model select. So now all I have to do is push down on the rotary encoder. And it comes up and gives me a list of models that I have already programmed, programmed in here. I've got the IYF44, the Rapid, and my Walrus. Uh, that's something else. With the Walrus, I've taken a picture of it. And I'm able to upload the photos to the radio. So when I select the model, I immediately know, yes, that's the plane I want to fly. It's really handy. It, uh, it saves you from having a uh, possibility of selecting the wrong model if you're in a hurry. 
<clears throat> so we'll go over and uh, let's highlight the, the walrus and load it. When you highlight it and click enter again, it gives you another set of menus. You can select, create, modify, copy, or delete. What's really cool about that, if you want to modify this one, uh, you can do that. And that will let you change the name, change the picture, that sort of thing. Um, select obviously loads the model into the current, you know, into the live memory that you're going to be using with. Create allows you to create a model. Of course, that would be for new models. And then, of course, copy and delete are pretty self-explanatory. So what we want to do to select it is we just want to press the encoder again. And it gives you a warning and asks you if you really want to change. And, of course, you tell it OK. Click it again. You'll see a loading bar come up. And it loads all the information. And it tells me again that I've got switches set in a, set in a position that they don't need to be in according to, to my preferences. And that would be my motor arm switch. And then a, a, a mix switch for the flaps. Um, really straightforward. If I want to change anything in the model, I just hit the model button. And then you can scroll through and see you've got RF system, endpoints, sub trim, trim setup, fail safe, uh, special functions, telemetry, pretty much everything you want uh, you know, to set up with your model is available on that screen. There are three screens available. You've got output mapping, of course more curves, uh, snap roll, elevator, uh, an extra mixer, and you do those through your page up and page down buttons. And then if I hit return, it takes me right back to the home screen again. The telemetry feature is pretty neat. If I one touch on the telemetry and it gives me a, a big view of the SWR, which is a readout of the health of the antenna system with the radio itself. It gives me the RSSI. It gives me the receiver battery voltage and then an analog voltage input if I've got that sensor enabled as well. And then you can page through eight different pages of telemetry settings. More analog voltages, speed, current, temperature, RPM, distance, altitude, uh, cell voltages, if you're using the uh, multi voltage or the multi cell voltage monitor up to 12s, all kinds of, uh, of information available there. And then on this main screen, you've actually got a couple of extras. That's that's your home screen, I guess you could call it. If I page down, it gives me a readout of a visual representation of the radio, and you can actually see there's a dot in there that moves and shows you what the stick position is. Then of course you've got logical switches that tells you what what they are and if they're activated. Then you've got GPS. Uh, if you've got GPS in the, in the in the plane, for example, or uh, that would give you coordinates here. And then, of course, the GPS for the radio, it would show its current position as well. And there's a distance feature over here that would measure distance between the radio and the aircraft if it's so equipped. So, anyway, um, I really, really like this radio quite a bit. Um, it fits my hands really well. It feels solid. Uh, I don't have a problem accessing switches. Uh, I love the color screen. It's just really versatile. The programming, I was really surprised to see that the FreeSky uh, FRTX operating system was very easy to, na to navigate. I didn't feel like I had to have a computer interface to set up some airplanes. Um, so far, I've got the Rapide set up in here. I've got my Walrus set up in here, and then I've got an IYF-44. And the reason I chose those models to go first was because that allowed me to experiment with some of the more oddball programming. Uh, the the IYF-44 not necessarily being odd, but since it's a delta wing, I wanted to see how, how the uh, system handled that, and it was a very simple setup. And then on the Walrus with uh, separate aileron servos, I've got it set up for flapperons and then a flap elevator mix and a couple other things, and that was very simple to set up as well using the FRTX menu. So, give you an example here. If I can do this uh, and not... Uh, not make it too hard to see. I'm going to try to pick the radio up and uh, let you guys see in the camera view how it fits in my hands. Alright, so anyway, to give you an idea, this is without the neck strap, of course, and I do fly with the neck strap, so uh, that's how the radio fits in my hands when I'm pinching. It works out pretty well. I've got uh, got these things, you know, everything fits really well. I don't find it a problem to reach any of the switches, and uh, I can get to uh, the trims pretty easy. Trim center. Trim center. That's not a problem. These two extra trim, trims here are available if you want to program them. Of course, now these I have to take my, I'm doing this through the camera view, forgive me. These I have to take my hands off and adjust, which, you know, like I said, is not a big deal. Um, but I really like the, the layout RSSI, of the radio. Zero dB. And I've got her telling RSSI, me RSSI zero. on the spring-loaded switch up here. 
but I find it, you know, it, it works out really well because my fingers tend to stay on the shoulders of the radio anyway, unless I'm reaching down to grab those sliders on the back. But it fits me really well. I love the uh, I love the way it balances in my hands, especially with the neck strap. It feels very nice. Now, I did fail to mention that there are accelerometers in here that you can uh, you can take access uh, to if you wanted, uh, for example, to be able to flip the radio forward. The accelerometers are a pretty cool feature. So that's a quick look at the FreeSky Horus. I'm going to be using it quite a bit over the next few months. I've got another review coming up pretty soon, the Great Plains Rapide, that I'm going to be using the uh, the Horus with. And uh, of course, I'll uh, I'll keep you guys informed as the as the thread progresses as to anything else that I find about it. But so far, I'm really impressed. I've been looking forward to this radio for quite a while, and uh, I'm I'm just amazed at the capabilities and the build quality. The switches feel really good. That was something that uh, that I was really concerned about. I didn't know you know what the 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 feel was going to be because for me that's as much a selling point on a radio as anything else but everything does this uh this slider feels nice both of them do the six position switch is very positive the trims feel good and these gimbals i just cannot emphasize how emphasize how much the uh the gimbals impress me these are easily the best gimbals that i've felt on an rc transmitter in a while and of course being hall effect gimbals you don't get any of the jitter that you do with with uh, potentiometers so that's always a plus it allows for more accurate flight uh, probably the radio is capable of a lot better accuracy than i am so Anyway, hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed this short video about the Free Sky Horse, and please feel free to uh, head on over to rcgroups.com for the full review. Thanks.